Welcome to Clements Family Farm. Let's talk a little bit about vacuum sealing. A lot of you have been asking questions on the process and what should I do, what shouldn't I do, how long should I do it for? And then there are some asking questions why. If you haven't seen my latest video on the different methods of processing your vanilla beans, go check that video out. It will show you the different processes and then also the effects of vacuum sealing. I've been doing it for 10 years. I've seen a tremendous difference in my extract. I really didn't know why until about three years ago when I first started testing all of these for all of you. And to explore the reasons why. Why is this working? Why are certain things don't work? To make a better extract. I know one thing, I'm trying to develop my extract make the best that I can for my clients and for my own use. I mean, that's the whole reason I started my vanilla extract was for my own use. Let's talk about vacuum sealing. It is not a necessary process, but if you want to enhance your extract a little bit more, you can vacuum seal your jars and get a little bit more flavor out of them. It is important uh, for me to use it in my process because I know from the testing, the mechanical process of this draws out more flavor compounds than just shaking your jars. This is actually going to make it a little bit better. And the reasons why is when you create that vacuum on the jar, it's actually expanding those fibers in the vanilla bean. It's opening them up, allowing more fluid to pass through and soak in and then there is also another mechanical action going on when you release the jar. It's actually contracting. And then it's kind of like a sponge and squeezing it. So when you release the air in there, it contracts and then that fluid or the flavor compounds gets pushed back out into the regular fluid between the alcohol and the water that you have. So <clears throat> it is a mechanical action happening. It's pretty simple. That's all it is. Most of you have a vacuum sealer bags or a, a, a single jar vacuum sealer. If you have just a unit like this, this is all I have. Uh, I am going to get a backup unit where it's just a, a single one. I know Amazon carries them. I'll put some links down below, but they just have the single jar ones that will fit either the wide mouth or the regular mouth jars. And you stick it on top and you hit the button and it vacuums it. Or you have something like this. A lot of these machines have hidden little tubes on them because they are made for marinating meat. Uh, and vacuum sealing jars for pr preservation. Check your machine if you have one of these. Uh, they don't make this machine anymore or I would link it. Uh, but this has been a fine machine for me. And it has a canister setting on it which will start pulling a vacuum on this side. That's pretty much it for mach machines. Almost any of them will work really well. The most important thing out of all this that I've learned is the jars. Since COVID hit and the shortage on jars, we've seen a decline in the quality of jars. Uh, I'm talking about off-brand. The ball jars, I haven't had any issues. The Kerr jars, I think it's Kerr. Uh, there's also the Home Harvest ones. Those are all name brands that have been around for years. I haven't had any issues with those jars, but any of the off-brand jars been having troubles with the seals. The lids, putting them on and then them not being able to keep a seal. It is important because I don't want to keep doing this. I messed with them a few times, got them to seal, but they don't hold. So it is important. And I do know that we're talking with everybody uh, on my channel and then other groups. They're also having the same issue with the off-brand jars. But I got a couple ball jars here uh, that I use. I use nothing but ball jars. Well, I, I don't say that. shouldn't say that. The two that are most available to me is the ball jars and the Kerr. Uh, as far as the lids go, they're all pretty much the same. Same thing, kind of a name brand 
tend to be a little bit better uh, when it comes to the lids. A little bit thicker, not as thin, don't warp as well. Uh, I had some concerns, people talking about having the alcohol touch the inside of the lids. If you look at this one, all my canning jar lids all have a seal on them. Uh, they're all coated and then they have the ring around for canning. This is not metal. The top is metal, the bottom's not. The part that hits the alcohol and your vanilla beans will never ever touch metal unless they've been damaged or scraped. Uh, I reuse mine from canning. Since they're no good for canning anymore, I use them for all my vacuum stuff. So I do save my lids because they'll vacuum seal a hundred times uh, without having to put a new new lid on there. But it's, it is important to have good lids and then make sure that they're clean, kinda. I do this daily. Sometimes they get clean, sometimes they don't. And it's not that big of a deal. Uh, they, will, they will seal, even if there's some vanilla seeds on there. Because uh, as soon as you pop them off, you're gonna get stuff on it and not that big of a deal. I really wanted to show you this today and explain how I go about vacuum sealing and why it's important. Once you got your lid, you got it all clean, you just put it on the jar. Marshmallows is the best way to show you the reaction of what's happening with your vanilla bean. Thankfully, I had a couple stale uh, marshmallows in the cupboard. i throw one in there. Put the lid on. Here's the adapter that came, or I actually bought this adapter separate because my machine didn't come with one. These are well worth it. This is for the regular mouth, and then there is one here for the wide mouth. I use these almost daily. And what you wanna make sure every now and then is there is a silicone rubber seal in here. Make sure that they're clean. You can use a little bit on a cloth, just a little bit of the alcohol that you're using, or you can use rubbing alcohol or just wash them really good in the sink, a little soap and water. Don't have to get crazy, but right now I don't need, I use them daily and I might wash them once a week if they get really bad. Anyway, once you get your lid on, put your adapter on the top and then take your hose from your machine and put it on there. I'm gonna go ahead and fire up my camera because I really want you to see this action. All right, got everything ready. Turn on my machine, hit the canister mode. It's gonna get a little bit loud, but really want you to see what's happening. See them rising up in there? They basically doubled in size. All right, so they basically doubled in size. Let me make sure this has got a good seal on it. And you can see, sometimes it just gets hung up, just pop it back in there and you're good. All right, so we got a good seal on it. You can see that. All right, so they doubled in size. What's that mean? Those fibers opened up, it pulled all that air out and started expanding it. Now what happens when you pop the seal on it? Look at that. They all shrank up to less than what they were. So there's that pumping action that I was talking about where that fluid gets sucked into the bean and then when you release it, it pushes the fluid out of the bean. Pretty incredible. I need to change my battery real quick. All right, got my battery changed. Let's do this one more time so you can see that, that action. Put the lid on there. Put the hose, canister.
You could see them expanding now. gonna go ahead and release it again and hopefully you get it and there you have it so typically once I get them sealed I just leave them put a ring on it just in case the vacuum releases overnight you didn't get a good seal on it I just put a ring on it uh, for the big ball jars, I like these plastic ones instead of the metal rings for those because you opening and closing these, you're going to get some extract on there and the threads kind of get tacky from the extract. Uh, I know I do this every day, so it becomes cumbersome. So I like these plastic ones because they don't seal to the jar as much with a bunch of extract and stuff like that in there that's the only reason i use these plastic ones only to hold the lid down just in case that seal does release so i will put a vacuum on everything put a ring on it and then i'll give them a good shake and let them sit on the counter until i come back either tonight or the next morning i shake my jars twice a day um, so i check the vacuum on them because you can't see it like you can with the marshmallow. And then if I need to, I will put another vacuum on them. So my process, when I start a first extract, what I do is, since I shake my jars twice daily, is in the morning, I'll give it a good shake. I will release the vacuum from it and then shake them again and then put a vacuum back on it and then let them sit till tonight. And then tonight I just shake them. I just do it once a day for the first two weeks, two, three weeks. Uh, again, it does become cumbersome, but it's an action that needs to take place to get a little bit more uh, extract out of it. Anyway, that's what I do. You probably don't need to do it that often. Uh, that's just my method. Two weeks at least, sometimes three. But after the two weeks, I just leave the vacuum on the jars because you're still going to get that expansion on them. And then I leave them. And then I just shake them twice a day. Uh, I know I get my extracts done within three to four months if I'm just sitting them on the counter and shaking them twice a day along with the vacuum seal it will take you a little bit longer to get a completion without the vacuum seal. That's why I do it. Anyway, um, pretty simple. All right, so I'm doing a new method with the total circulation process. And even with this method, I'm still vacuum sealing. So why I'm doing a leak check uh, on my contraption here, I am putting my vanilla beans in a jar with a measured amount of fluid to make sure everything is covered. And then I'm putting a vacuum seal on them. So why I've got the thing going and I'm leak checking everything before I put my vanilla and my alcohol in there, I have my vanilla beans on a vacuum. Now, using this method here, it's only gonna take me a few weeks to finish this off along with the vacuum seal. So I'm going to go ahead and get another batch ready and get them on a vacuum seal. So I wanted to show you how much air is actually coming out of these vanilla beans. Hopefully with this will capture it because there is micro bubbles stuck in your vanilla beans. And let's see if we can capture that here. Take a look.
All right, you can see that there was a ton of air trapped in there. These beans have been sitting in this alcohol for about two hours now, and the air hasn't been released. The only way you're gonna release some of that air out of those fibers is using the vacuum seal. You could, you could, it's still going, and the air is going to continue to come out of there because you've just pulled a vacuum on the jar and it's trying to pull that air out to the surface and out of those fibers. Uh, it's incredible to watch. I really do kind of like filming some of this because it's, it's kind of like a lava glass or a lava lamp. So anyway, you can see how important it is. We are expanding those fibers and allowing that fluid to come in and then also allowing uh, the flavor compounds to come out. A lot of times when I do this, these beans will actually get sucked to the top. There's so much air trapped inside the vanilla beans themselves. When you pull the vacuum on it, it, it loosens everything up and then it allows it to float to the top. Once those air bubbles pop and, and surface, then the beans will will go back down to the bottom anyway that's pretty much it for vacuum sealing i don't know if there's any other questions that have come up but it is pretty simple uh the machines common uh, this is just a food saver and then i'll link a couple machines in the description below and some handhelds i think i'm gonna get a little handheld one just as a backup if this one ever craps out on me because they do go out on you if you use them a lot. So is vacuum sealing necessary for making extract? It is not. You don't need to. Does it make it a better extract? In my opinion, it does. From the numbers and the testing I have done, it does allow more total dissolved solids into the fluid, which is in turn relation to the flavor compounds. So I believe you are getting more flavor compounds into your fluid by using this method. So I highly recommend it, especially for all of you that are just shaking your jars and putting it on there. Sometimes you forget about them. This will make a better extract for you. All right, I'm gonna end it there. So from Clements Family Farm, we'll see you on the next video.